Hello, and welcome to the Sarah Seems Podcast. My name is Sarah. I'm coming to you from Columbus, Ohio, where I live with my partner, Troy, and our cats, Alex and Moo. Today is Saturday, February 3rd. How is it February already? So crazy. Although January did also feel like it lasted forever this year. Time is weird. Anyway, it is like a beautiful sunny day here today. It's around 50 degrees. It feels like spring. Midwesterners will know it's like the first fake spring. It's not real. It'll be cold again. We'll probably get a lot more snow, but we're trying to enjoy it while we can. So yeah, thought I would hop on and record a podcast today. Uh, it's been about three weeks since my last episode, so I have a lot to share with you. This channel is where I share mostly knitting, but um, other crafts as well. Sewing, I have a few sewing things today and quilting um, occasionally as well, but mostly knitting and yarny goodness. What else? Social media, all the links um, are down below in the description box, as well as tags and links for anything that I talk about today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in um, the comment box down below. I feel out of practice because it's been three weeks, but I did publish a different type of video in the time between my last podcast and now. So I published a special pattern roundup video that was 15 classic colorwork knitting patterns that are size inclusive. Um, so I talk in the beginning of that episode about what my size inclusive standard is and a little bit more about all of that. But yeah, if you're interested in some classic color work knitting and wanting to support some size inclusive designers and patterns, definitely check that video out. I'll try and link it up here as well. Um, and I can put a link to it in the description box down below. But yeah, that was really fun to make. It was my first pattern roundup video. So I hope that you'll check it out if you haven't already. And with that said, I'm going to just jump in because I have lots to share with you today. And the first thing I want to talk about is what I'm wearing, which I finished a while back, but I'm not sure if I have actually worn it on the podcast yet. This is my tessellated sweater by Andrea Mallory. This was her Rhinebeck pattern this year. I didn't finish it in time for Rhinebeck, which I didn't go to, but I was knitting along in the spirit, but I did finish it. Uh, I think before the new year. So that was good. This was, it, it is a beast to knit. It's, you know, I've talked about it before on a lot of other episodes, so I won't go too into it. But the reason I'm wearing it today, aside from that I haven't worn it on the podcast yet, is that I did some sweater surgery on it. So when I finished this, um, I'll put a video in of me wearing it after I first finished it. It was very, very cropped. And I think the wide band of ribbing at the bottom also added to the illusion of it being even shorter than it was because you have this big thick band of dark fabric and then the color work looked very short. So I convinced myself it was fine and that I could wear it that way. But in the past few weeks, every time I would try to pull it out of my closet and style it, I just ended up not wearing it because I wasn't happy with the fit and how short it was. So this past week, I had a really busy work week, so I knew I was just gonna have a little bit of time in the evenings to work on something. And I decided I was gonna take this week to fix this sweater. This was an absolutely massive undertaking <laughs> because the sweater is knit um, with mosaic knitting. So there are a lot of slip stitches. There's also three different yarns and there's the color work. So I knew this was going to a possibly fail like I was either going to fix the sweater or end up having to frog it basically and I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do so I need you all to help me but I decided I was gonna try because if I wasn't wearing it then it what you know not wearing it is just as bad as not having it so I decided to try so what I did was put in a lifeline where the ribbon met the body and you know, put my needles in at the top of the ribbing and cut in between, separated them. And when I did that, and I knew this was gonna happen because of the slip stitches, wherever there had been a slip stitch, it wasn't caught by the lifeline. So what I ended up with was my lifeline and like a million and a half um, like little light bulb stitch markers or like safety pins holding all the slip stitches 
Here's a picture of what that looked like because it was crazy. It was like it had like metallic fringe on the bottom of it. And so that was the first hurdle. Then what, you know, the ribbing was fine. I just knit the additional length and you could see that in the picture there. I've like knit the additional color work on top of the ribbing and it's next to where all the stitch markers were. And then I had to pick back up all the stitches that the markers were holding and everything there. And then I had to graph them together using Kitchener stitch. And there's over 300 stitches in the body of this sweater. So it did take me all week and a few hours this morning to finish this, but let me show you how it turned out. So here's how it turned out. You can probably tell immediately, this is where the graft was. It looks very obvious to me. I haven't had a chance to block this again since I finished. I just finished it this morning. So I am hoping that a block is gonna help the fabric to feel more cohesive, but I think it's as good as it's gonna get. Like, I don't think I'll ever, I will always know that this is where I added the new section. So I kept the original ribbing. From here to here is the new section that I knitted. And then here's where I grafted it. Like I said, I am hopeful that blocking will help a bit, but I think you're always gonna have this bit of a line here. Um, so I don't know, it is, the length is much better now. Um, it's honestly maybe even a smidge too long now. I think like right about here would have been perfect, but what, like I said, with this wide band of dark color, I really don't mind it being a little bit longer because the actual color work looks like a little bit more of a normal length now. And I think from the side, the length looks really good. Go back. So yeah, I don't know, what do you all think? I do think even from like here, most people wouldn't notice it. I think, again, I'm always gonna know, but I do love how this fits and feels to wear. So I think I'm gonna block it and see if that helps. And then worst case scenario, I'll just keep it as something to wear around the house um if if that really bothers me but i'm really proud of myself for taking the time to do this i've never done anything like this before and this was probably about as hard as it gets <laughs> for doing this kind of thing just because of everything going on in the sweater but i do at least feel like i can wear it comfortably now even if that's just around the house and i don't know i feel like it was sitting in my closet bothering me so proud of myself for taking that on. I'm really curious if any of you have ever tried anything like this or if you have any advice for me on how to make that join look a little bit better, but I think that's probably as good as it's going to get. So I'm just going to block it and we'll go from there. All right, jumping into finished objects. I have one sewing, three pairs of socks, a few other things, and some yarn that I spun. So like I said, it's been three weeks, so I have quite a bit. So I'll try and go through them at a fair clip. All right, first one is a sewing project. This is one that I've been excited about ever since the pattern came out. This is the Henrietta skirt by Spaghetti Western Sewing. Here's a picture since I won't be able to show mine super well. This is available up to a 72 inch waist. It's made, uh, I made size, I did kind of a mashup of medium and large. So the pattern is it's a really cool pattern. It comes with um, a few pieces that you need, but then you pretty much draft the like larger rectangular pieces on your own. So for the front and back panels, I use size medium. And then for the side panels, I use size large because I wanted a little bit more drama in the gathering. And here it is. So the fabric I used, and I have been wearing it, so sorry if it's not like pristine, but um, the fabric I used was a like blackish gray tinsel twill that I got secondhand. And you can see, so the front panel is just straight, but then the side panels have this really fun, like gathered seam. It's so fun to wear. Sorry, you really can't see it, but um, it's, I was worried this fabric would have too much drape and not enough volume, but it's really, really nice. There you can really see the gathered detail. I'd like to make another one in a fabric with more body, so it's a little bit more dramatic, but this one's super nice to wear. I feel like I've been trying to find the perfect like 
black or dark neutral because this reads a little bit more gray um, like skirt in my wardrobe forever and just never landed on the right pattern fabric combo and I feel like I finally have so really happy with that highly recommend the pattern sorry something in my eye and I love the way that Sadie does her sizing so her medium is like the true U.S. women's size medium. So if you're normally like an extra large or a double XL even, you might be like a medium or large in her pattern. So definitely something to know going into it, but nice to see her super inclusive um, and large size range. Okay, next I have a few pairs of socks for you. I wasn't planning to finish all three pairs of socks, but I did. <laughs> so the first ones are a design that I'm working on. So I'm working on a sock set design that's going to be called the Coneflower Sock Set. And there will be the Echinacea Socks and the Coneflower Socks. So Echinacea is just like the technical, that it's not technical, it's like the genus or whatever, you know, the biological name of the flower. I don't know why words are failing me. But yeah, I finished my first pair of the Echinacea Socks. So this is a really beautiful Explore Knits and Fiber sock set that was gifted to me by my friend Jess. And it knitted up so pretty. This purple is just stunning. But yeah, so you can see the cuff is twisted rib and it has just this little bit of color work. It's pretty subtle in this color combo. We've got a contrast slip stitch heel. And then the toe also has that color work. I think you see it a little bit better on the toe. I actually went back and added a few additional rounds, which um, I hadn't done on the cuff. So I just kind of duplicate stitched those up here. So I think when you actually do them with the color work, you get a little more credit for it. Um, yeah, I really like how these turned out. Here's the second one. I ran out of my contrast color. So the second one is a little bit different. <laughs> and what I learned from that on this one, you can see the color work up here a little better. So what I learned from this is that a sock set is not enough to give you cuff, heel, toe, and color work in this pattern. So when I release the actual pattern, it will not have the contrast heel. It's just going to be the same color as the body. So you'll still have the contrast cuff and toe with the color work and then the solid heel. Um, and then maybe I'll just, you know, give an option in the pattern that if you have more than 20 grams of your contrast color, you could also do the heel because I do think they look really cute this way. But yeah, I figured out all the color work. I actually got the pattern written up already. So I feel like these were like a really great learning experience. I, I feel like this pattern gave me more trouble than I thought it would because um, it is fairly simple. So it was great to be able to do like a run through pair. Um, and I think I'll have enough of my yarns for the other pair to make another version of these. And so they'll be like a true set. So like if you have two full skeins of sock yarn, you could make both pairs of socks. At least that's my idea. So yeah, I do really like how they turned out even with the missing extra contrast on the toe here. I think they're really cute. And I will just keep these ones in my sock box for myself for the year. And I'm excited to cast on the next design in the sock set, which is going to be an all over color work design. And then I'll knit another pair of these as well. So yeah, really pleased with these. The yarn is beautiful, excited about the pattern. Um, yeah. Just throwing things all over the room. All right, next is a very fun pair of socks. I had one of these I think finished last time. Yes, this one. So this was my first D20 sock I showed you last time. They're not true shorties. They're kind of like an ankle sock, but basically I make these by taking a 20 sided dice, 20 scrap yarns and rolling the dice to pick which color and how many rows I will knit. So this was the first one I had finished. And since then I have finished this one, which I love that this one has a lot more of the blue in it. So you can see they are friendly, but they are certainly not twins. But yeah, I think they're really fun together. The palette is really fun. These are the leftovers from my scrappy advent swap that I did during the holiday season. Excited to add these to the sock box. 
I will say the one thing about this method is that you end up with a ton of ends to weave in. So if you hate weaving in ends, this might not be the type of project for you, but I am really pleased with how those turned out. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and cast on a DK weight marled version um, with the same yarns while I have them all pulled out. So that'll be like the next iteration of these. And last but not least, I finished a pair of DK weight vanilla socks for Troy. Here they are. Um, this is just a DK vanilla sock. Um, I actually do 44 stitches for him. He likes his socks to fit a bit tighter. And I just held the yarn double, pulling from the inside and outside of the ball. And the uh, variation in these turned out really nice. I was afraid we'd get a little bit of weird self-striping, but um, they really look pretty good. I'm really pleased with them. Again, more of an ankle length, not quite a full leg on these. The yarn is from local dyer and yarn shop Dye Mad Yarns. And this was one of their um, sock of, you know, they do like a sock yarn of the month kind of club. And this one was moth inspired and it was inspired by the Cecropia moth. So yeah, very pretty reds, browns, neutrals. So Troy will be getting those. All right, that's it for socks, but I do have a few other accessories. So when I was uh, visiting Seattle, I had the chance to go to La Mercerie on Bainbridge Island in the fall and picked up a skein of La Bien Aimé Cori, uh, nope, I'm lying, La Bien Aimé Sport Nouveau, which is 100% non-superwash merino. The color was Coquelicot, which is like this beautiful red. I'll show you right now. And I knew I wanted to make a hat with it because I've been wanting a hat in this color. So that is what I did first. I might have had this started last time. This is the Classic Ribbed Hat by Pearl Soho. I actually haven't tried this on yet. I am worried it might be a little bit long, but we'll see. If anything, I could just double fold the brim or raise the brim up, but it is just that perfect orangey red. So nice, one by one rib, very classic. Sorry if you hear doors opening and closing, that's Troy moving around in the house. <laughs> so yeah, I finished the hat and then had enough yarn left over that I wanted to make a pair of matching mitts. So I made these. These are the stockinette mitts by, let me get this name right, Svetlana Volkova, I believe. Um, super simple pattern. They're just stockinette, so you do get that little bit of rolling at the top and bottom, but um, I think when it's a design feature, that can be really cute. They have a gusset for the thumb here, and again, just a bind off at the thumb. Let me actually throw these on. I'm so, so pleased with them. So I decided to make the adult large. Um, I was between medium and large um, based on the size chart. But I decided, to, or no, large and extra large maybe. I sized down because I prefer my mitts to fit a bit tighter and these fit great. So here they are, just like perfect fingerless mitts. That thumb gusset. Um, I did have to go down a needle size. So the pattern calls for a three millimeter needle, I think, and I had to go down to 2.75 just because that's what I had available. Um, but yeah, I love how they fit. I love how they look. They're just simple, but they're so nice to wear. And I was able to use up like every little bit of this yarn because I actually had finished this mitten like to pattern and wasn't gonna have quite enough to do this one so to finish it, but just by the slightest bit. So I had to unravel a few rows from here and they ended up being both just like a couple rows short of the pattern, but I actually prefer the fit this way. And I used up, like I said, every bit of that skein of yarn. So really pleased that I was able to use all of that up as it felt like kind of a special yarn. So I got hat and matching mitts from one skein of the La Bien Aimé Sport Nouveau. So if you're looking for a little matching accessory set, I would definitely recommend grabbing a skein of that in your favorite color. And the yarn is beautiful to work with. I really loved it. I would definitely buy it again for any like sport weight garment pattern. I think it would be amazing. So yeah, really fun. Um, definitely been needing 
some more mitts and another hat. So very pleased with these. And last but not least, I have some yarn to show you that I spun. So I think I showed this as a whip on the last podcast, but I made this crazy. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, it's a bright sunny day outside, but it's a bit dark in here because it's midday. So I have some artificial light. So I'm trying to avoid the shadows, but please bear with me. Um, yes, I made this crazy fluffy yarn. So this was uh, some fiber that I got secondhand from a D stash and it was, it was just labeled as wool. So I'm not exactly sure what type of wool, but it had all these fun like sari silk neps and it is very neppy. Like there is a lot going on in here. I intended to do this as a two ply, started it as a two ply and then accidentally plied my two ply with another ply. So it ended up as a three ply, which as I said, my, my initial thought was to do a two ply and make a hat with it. It ended up a bit chunkier than I had hoped. I still think it could be a cute hat, um, but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure it's a good color for me. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this yet. If anyone has any recommendations, please let me know. I would say this is probably like worsted to Erin weight. Um, definitely ha would have enough for a hat or maybe a cowl, but it would be small. Um, yeah. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Otherwise, I don't, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this guy, but it was very fun to spin. So yeah, I make yarn now. Who knew? <laughs> it's fun. All right. So let me pause here. That's the end of FOs and we will move on to whips. Okay, so the first whip I have to share with you is a really exciting sewing project. Um, normally it doesn't take me more than like a couple of days to finish a sewing project, but this is a big one. I think I talked about it on the last episode, but we are going to a fancy black tie wedding in New York in a couple of weeks. Um, and I decided to make my own dress and I'm making the Roberts Wood bow patchwork dress. This Here's a picture of it. It's the Alicia dress. I'm making size 20. Um, I've talked about the pattern more in a previous episode if you're curious, but it is this crazy patchwork dress. I'm basically making mine exactly like the photo, except I'm using navy. So I'm using a mix of satin and silk organza. And let me show you the progress that I have. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up to do this. So here it is. I have the bodice pieced. I also have the sleeves finished. They have this really fun barrel shape. Everything needs a good steam. It's a bit wrinkly, but I love how it's holding its shape so well. Um, I will be, there's a placket. There will be um, satin covered buttons added. You can see the neckline and the sleeve openings are bias bound. So yes, I have finished the bodice. I love how sheer it is. I love how the bows look. Um, it's turning out really, really fun. Like I said, everything needs a good uh, steaming. It's a little bit wrinkly right now as I've been working on it, but yes. And then I've also finished the slip. So this is just like a polyester lining fabric. Um, oh, I can't show the whole thing. That's just what I'm gonna wear under it since it is so sheer. And for that, I actually used the Orchard Dress by Helen's Closet, which is the same dress I'm wearing under this. It's one I've made many times. Um, and I just thought it would be perfect as the lining because I know it fits me really well. And so basically what I have left to do this weekend <laughs> is make the huge skirt. And that's gonna be a lot. So I need to bust that out this week. And then if I have time, I would also like to make the little bow harness that goes over top, but we will see if I have time or not. So yes, very pleased with this. It's fitting very, very well. I will say the bodice is quite short on it. It hits almost more like an empire waist than truly at your waist, but I'm very excited to get the skirt on this and get it finished up. So that is the progress. Let me set this down over here. All right, it's not kind of a beast to share, but I wanted to show you my progress. So what I am doing is um, 
every time I sew two patchwork pieces together, I serge the seam, press it, and then I'm actually stitching them all down so that they're laying in the right direction and you don't get a lot of seam allowances poking out behind the organza. At first I wasn't stitching them down, but it looked really messy. I think this way it looks very clean. Like all the patchwork's very clear. There's not, you're not seeing anything you don't wanna be seeing through the sheer parts. So yes, very pleased with how it's coming along, but it is a time consuming project. I've seen a lot of really pretty versions of this on Instagram though, if you're curious to see some more casual versions. And I would also definitely consider making a more casual version out of some like summer weight fabrics um, in the future. Maybe I will. All right, moving into knitting whips. I have four to share with you today. The first one I'm just gonna touch on, I haven't worked on it a ton, but just wanted to show you. Um, this is my Botanic Shawl by Stephen West. I am knitting this with um, my Advent Minis from my Camellia Fiber Co. Advent and the main color, which is this um, Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock. The color is Toasted. It's a real pretty neutral kind of pinky brown color. Here is the mini that I'm working on right now. They're so soft. It's just this like extremely pastel rainbow. And yeah, I've made a bit of progress on this. I've got it on a really long needle now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did switch to the second mini. I'm sure you won't be able to tell where because they're very similar. I think maybe just like the last couple of rows are the new color and that was the old color. So for the most part, I think the whole thing is gonna look fairly consistent. Some of the later colors of minis did get a little bit more variety in them. Um, I also decided I'm going to, I have a little bit more yarn than what the pattern calls for, but I wanna use up all my minis, so I'm just gonna keep going. I might add an extra repeat of this section before moving on to the border. Um, but yeah, I really wanna use all of it up, so I'm just gonna keep going. I think you do like 19 or 20 of these sections. So far I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, it's getting there. The rows are getting longer, but it's, it's really fun to work on. It doesn't require um, a ton of thought or effort. So, and the yarn is really nice to use. So if I, when I need like a real easy on my hands project, this is the one I've been reaching for. Um, again, I do see this as a very long-term project. I just wanted to give you a little update. All right, move that somewhere floor <laughs> running out of space okay uh next one is the anchor sweater uh, men's version that i'm working on for troy get this over here i've made quite a bit of progress on this actually so i'm just plugging away on the body but here's what i've got so it's getting there. I think I only need a couple more inches of stockinette in the round before I move on to the ribbing. Um, I'm using San Iscarn Mini Alpaca Held Double. And I did add short rows also. So there's no short rows in the yoke, but I did add short rows um, under, you know, under the yoke after finishing the yoke before separating um, for the sleeves and the body. So that seems to have helped the fit and to raise the back neck. So yeah, I'm not used to having to knit. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> I'm not used to having to knit this much body. It is a lot of stockinette, but it is enjoyable. The fabric is really nice and I think the end is in sight. So yes, the pattern calls for a, an extremely long body on this sweater, but I got one of Troy's favorite ready to wear sweaters and have compared them for length. And I definitely don't, I mean, mine needs to be like five inches shorter than what the pattern calls for. And this yarn is quite heavy and I expect it to block out a lot. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution and not overdoing it. Cause I think if I need to block it a little bit more aggressively, I can definitely get the length that I need. Um, but I don't want it to be like a dress on him either. So yeah, I kind of couldn't believe how long they were calling for that to be in the pattern, um, but everyone is different. So always good to check those things. 
Okay, next up is a couple sweaters I'm working on for myself. First one I'm gonna show you is the Ursa by Jacqueline C. Slack. This is a bulky weight pattern. I am using Echo View Fiber Mills Ranger Base. It's 100% merino. This unfortunately has been discontinued. The mill is no longer open, but it is a beautifully soft, bulky yarn. And here is my Ursa. Again, this is a big old chunky, bulky sweater, but um, I did all of the brioche on the body since we last shared, <laughs> since my last podcast. Looks really nice. And I have started the first sleeve. So far the fit is good. I think I'm, I'm really eager to block this and see how it relaxes. I think with the brioche, with how bulky this is, when I put it on, the brioche is tending to like bubble up a bit. So I'm hoping I can block a little bit more width into it and then the fit will be better. So yeah, I am curious. I definitely don't think the fit is gonna be as nice on this one as it is on my Ursina, which is um, the worsted weight version of this pattern. It's one of the first sweaters I knit. Actually, it's the first sweater I finished and I love that sweater. I will say one thing that is on that sweater that is also I've noticed on this sweater is that for me, there's a little bit of extra fabric here at the raglan seams and it tends to kind of, um, where the brioche detail is here, tends to kind of buckle a bit. So I think if I knit one of these again, which at this point, this being my second one, I don't know that I would, I might size down for the raglan and then increase additional stitches for the body um, to get the body width that I want. Cause it's very, it's meant to be quite fitted in the top, but mine tends to like collect extra fabric right here. So eager to finish this and block it. Um, I expect I'll have that done before the next podcast and then we'll see how it ends up fitting. But the um, yarn's been a real delight to work with and the pattern is lovely as all of Jackie's patterns are. Um, this one is available, I don't have the full size range, but I am making size five, which is the 50 inch bust, and that gives me about six inches of positive ease. Okay, last one is my most exciting one, but let me pause here and I'll be right back. Sorry about that, Moo was trying to break the door down. <laughs> I'm sure you could hear that. So yes, this is my most exciting whip. I love it so much. This is my Moonflower Pullover by Sari Nordland. Here's a picture of her version. It's so beautiful, the cables, the seed stitch, such a delight to knit. I have been absolutely devouring this project also because I decided to knit mine in a fade. So I think I had started this last time and maybe just had the yoke um, finished. I think I had just joined in the round for the body, but let me show you how much I got. So. Here she is. So the body is done and blocked. I am obsessed with how this fade turned out. So as you can see, there's five different colors. So we've got the dark pink, light pink. There's this kind of blue, a lighter green, and then the darker green. The three middle colors fade so nicely. Um, they're so seamless. The dark pink and the darker green are definitely a little bit more harsh, but I think it looks really good. I'm so happy with it. And I think the fade in the cables is so fun. I'm so pleased you can really still see all the cable detail, but like these colors with this cable is just amazing. I'm so, so pleased with it. Here's the back. Definitely get a lot more of the pink on the back. The length is perfect, so I did decide to block it before I started the sleeves just to make sure I was happy with everything because the cables are very constricting on this. I knew it was gonna open up a lot. And with it being a drop shoulder, I didn't wanna knit my sleeves too long. That ended up not being a problem because I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up having these little shorter sleeves on this guy. So the sleeve kind of hits like where the hem hits. Um, I'm trying to like flop it out so you can see. So yeah, it's just gonna have this like slightly shorter sleeve, but I think it's still really cute. I have finished the first sleeve. 
So you can see there's still a little bit of the fade on the sleeve as well, just whatever I had left over. So I did have a few rows of the light pink. There's this fun little cable detail going down the arm and then it ends in the green. So yeah, all I have left to do is the other sleeve, which since it's short, did not take very long. And the fit is wonderful. The yarn is so soft and nice to wear. I was worried about some color bleeding when I blocked this, but did not experience any. So kudos to Tannis Fiber Arts, um, which I should say, this is their Pure Wash Worsted base. It was a, a dyed fade set. The collar, the pattern calls for a folded over collar. I just did a one by one rib single layer collar since I knew it was gonna be tight on yarn. And I just have to show you this beautiful back detail. So this row of stitches here that goes down into the arm and then the pickup here, like it just creates this beautiful, beautiful back detail. I just could not be more pleased with this. Um, and I love it. I don't even know what to say because I love it so much. Sorry, I feel like I'm standing up a lot in this episode. Uh, one thing I did change, I added a split him. So how to show this. So the side seam has this fun cable detail here. And then I decided to add a split hem. So I did have to do some rearranging of stitches to get the cable to flow into the split hem like it does. But all in all, that was not too difficult of a change. I've done similar constructions on other garments. So really pleased with that little detail. I think it adds to the more like casual feeling of this with in these colors, like with the fade. So yeah, I'm just so happy with it. Um, I can't wait to wear it and I can't wait to finish it. I, I might finish this today. I just love it. <laughs> The fade turned out so much better than I could have hoped for. Yeah, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I'm just really thrilled with it. I definitely think this will be a finished object next time and hopefully I'll be wearing it. I do, I do wish that I had enough yarn to do the full long sleeve because I think it's beautiful, but I will take what I can get. I'm just, I feel like this ended up being the perfect like yarn and project pairing and I love it. So I am just gonna be happy to have it finished and be able to wear it. So that is it for whips. Let me grab my acquisitions and we'll move on to those. All right, I have a few yarns to share with you and some quilting fabric. So I purchased a couple things from a local Knitters D stash recently. So I thought I'd share those with you. First up was this really fun skein of DK weight sock yarn. It feels Halloween-y to me. It's like purple, brown, orange, yellow, black, very fun. This is the Wool Baron. It's called One Badass Crafter, which is funny. It's a 8515 blend merino nylon, 100 grams, 225 meters, classic DK. And when Troy saw this, he loved it. So this might end up being socks for him. <laughs> he likes the wild colors in the socks. So that might end up being some fun like Halloween socks for Troy. I also got three skeins, well balls, they were already wound up, of this, which is this really pretty soft, like grayish purple. It's reading a little yellow on the screen, but that could also be my light. This is Julie Asselon Lizu DK. The color is Jardin de Tuileries, Garden of something. And it is 90% superwash merino, 10% silk. So it has a really nice drape and a really pretty sheen to it. I bought this with the intention of possibly making Rebecca Close's new pattern, the Rue, and using like a cream as the contrast color. But the more I look at that pattern, I'm not sure if it's for me. I think it's beautiful. I like the color work. I don't know if the color work is really my style and I don't know how it would fit into my wardrobe but the other thing is that I think I do like my sweaters to be more cropped and what's so cool about that sweater and I can put a picture of it in is that the bottom half is a different color than the top half and I think if I cropped it where I wanted to crop it you wouldn't get a lot of credit for that so now I'm thinking that these might just become like a linto or a 
love note or ranunculus or something in that vein so yeah i have three skeins of this um i do think the color is beautiful so i'll definitely make something from it just not exactly sure what that's going to be yet and most exciting i got some more new in from the d stash i now have two sweater quantities of new in in stash not sure if i showed the other one or not i also bought that one secondhand from someone's d stash and that one's like a beautiful dark bluish gray. I think I have four or five plates of that one. But from the same D stash I just got these other yarns, I got eight plates of this color of Nutiden. I think the color is called Morka or Morka. Um, it is just like a really dark, beautiful, like black cherry kind of color. And I am obsessed with it. I want to cast this on so bad, but I feel like I need to I need to finish these other sweaters. Then I need to really decide if what I want to cast on is another big oversized sweater, which maybe I do because as I said, it's probably going to be cold here for at least a couple more months. Or if I want to finish my Yoon sweater, which is another big woolly sweater that I have half finished, and then start some summer projects. So I really... Oh, this yarn smells so good. Newton has a really distinct smell, a good smell. And I don't know what it is. It's so interesting because I've now bought it. I've never bought it directly from them. I've only bought it from D Stash from two different people. And the yarn smells the same and so good every time. So I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. I might have to cast this on soon. I'm thinking about making the Seaway pullover by I think Ozetta. I can put a picture of that here. I want to make like a big oversized one to just be like a cozy lounge sweater and I think in this it would be gorge held double so we'll see I have a lot of this I think maybe enough to make two sweaters we'll see but yeah eee, I love it I'm so excited I I am on the new to din train I get the hype okay last one but not least I have some quilt fabric to show you so um, Taylor of Toad and So just released a new pattern. I think it's called the Nebulous Quilt. Here's a picture of the version I want to make in these colors. I'm obsessed with this. Their patterns are so unique and interesting. And this one just immediately caught my eye. And I've been wanting to make like a fun quilt for myself. Last year I did a lot of quilts that were, I, um, that's not true. I did two, I finished two quilts last year. They were both massive king size quilts. One was a gift. One was for us, but I wasn't entirely happy with how it turned out. And I think doing those two projects back to back kind of got me burnt out on quilting a little bit. So I did work on my quiltmas blocks around the holidays and that was really fun and got me like excited about it again. So I think I need a project like this that's like fun colors, interesting construction, smaller quilt, just for me, something fun. So. I did buy these colors. Here they are. They're all packaged up. I'm not going to take them out of the bundle, but I can tell you what they are. So they are all um, art gallery pure solids. I purchased them from Lamb and Loom Fabrics because those were the only people that had all the colors I needed. Um, the bright lemony yellow, that is lemonade. The black is caviar. The blue is arrow blue. Uh, the brighter pink is sweet pea and the lighter pink is crystal pink. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'll try and edit the sound out of my sneeze. <laughs> At least I had the fabric to cover me. Um, anyway, most of it's pink. The backing and background will be the pink. Um, I'm just really excited. I don't know when I'm going to get to this. This feels like a little bit more of a spring project, but excited to have it ready to go when I am ready to work on it. That is it for all the crafty stuff this week. Um, oh, actually, I did have one more acquisition, which I'm not going to show today. But one of my coworkers had a bunch of cones of yarn from back in the day when she was in college and learned on knitting machines. I guess they just got to take a bunch of cones of yarn home that had been donated to their school. And she doesn't knit anymore. And she brought them and gave them to me. And they're all cashmere <laughs> so she gave me probably like 12 or 15 cones 
of cashmere different weights most of them are lace though some of them are fuzzier than others um all beautiful neutrals brown black navy blue all my colors some have more than others i have two very large full cones of a beautiful dark brown um, but the black and the navy i have a little bit less of but you know they're cones so it's still a lot of yarn and she just gave them to me so i have all these beautiful cones of cashmere now that I anticipate holding with other things. So with my other new to den, the one that is like a brownish, bluish gray, I think I'm gonna hold a strand of that brown cashmere with it as if it, I was like holding it with mohair. Or like with something like this, um, I could hold, if I didn't wanna hold it double, I could hold a strand of the black mohair with it. Like that would be beautiful. So yeah, I anticipate using it almost like a mohair, but it's this beautiful fuzzy cashmere. So. I was so thrilled to get those and so thankful to her for just thinking of me when she was cleaning out her basement and I'm excited to use those. I think I'll just show, the, show them to you as I'm making projects with them because they take up a lot of space so I had to find somewhere else to store those. Anyway, um, chat, not too much going on here lately. I mean, it's been busy with work. It's been, um, the weather's been kind of all over the place the past couple of days have been beautiful but a week a week ago it was like foggy and spooky and misty and then the week before that it was like negative 20 so it's kind of been a roller coaster i think a lot of the country experienced that um like i said i did record that uh, pattern roundup video if you're interested i will have linked that below um, please do check it out and let me know what you think and uh, if you'd like to see more videos like that from me in the future I definitely have a couple other ideas I'd be happy to make for you all. I'd love to do a second version of the color work roundup that's like more fun, non-traditional color work patterns as opposed to the more traditional like fair isle type patterns. And um, also on the book front, I read all of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame and then reread them and listened to the podcast I told you guys about. And then I finally started getting into Crescent City which is the like companion series to Akatar, So Court of Thorns and Roses, I think it's like loosely in the same universe, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm only like maybe a fourth of the way through the first book, but it's been really fun. I'm reading the physical book, which I normally do audiobooks, but um, the audiobooks for those are exclusively on Audible and I use a different app. So I'm reading the physical book and it had been a while since I read a physical book because I just always am listening to audiobooks while I'm knitting or doing whatever else. And when I sat down to try and read it, it was a struggle. Like I, it took me a while to remember how to like focus on reading a phys physical book, which feels in, kind of embarrassing to say because I've been a pretty voracious reader my entire life, but I just had transitioned so much into audiobooks. I almost like forgot how nice it was to sit down and just read a book. So I've really been enjoying that, especially reading before bed when I've like had enough knitting. I just need some real quiet downtime and it's been helping me sleep. So that's great. Really been enjoying it. The book is fun. Excited to get more into it. I know the third one just came out. Please don't put any spoilers in the comments <laughs> for me or anyone else. But yeah, so I've just been reading that and enjoying it taking it easy outside of work time and uh, gearing up for February, which is gonna be a busy travel month, a really crazy month for us, busy for work. And also we're t I'm taking two trips. So we have this wedding in New York in a couple weeks. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to Chicago to visit some friends. So it's gonna be kind of a whirlwind, but I am really excited about all of it. And I'll be sure to get another podcast episode in there in a couple of weeks, so. Um, until then, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you made it till the end, thank you for hanging around. Please do all the YouTube things, you know, like, subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications when there's a new video. All that stuff really helps to grow the channel and help us build our little community here. So, um, yes, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful couple of weeks and get lots of crafting time in and I will see you then. Bye.